Hi there church, welcome to another one of our little midweek messages. This week I thought we'd continue looking at the articles of the armour of God. You remember a few weeks ago we spoke about Paul's instruction in Ephesians 6 that we put on the whole armour of God. And then after that we spent a little bit of time just looking at the first of those articles, the belt of truth. Well this week we're staying in that same verse, but we're, but we're going to be looking at the breastplate of righteousness. Ephesians 6 verse 14, let me just read it to you. Paul the Apostle says this, he says, Therefore make your stand, having put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness is essential if we as Christian soldiers are to make our stand against the enemy. So what is it? Well, well, first let's just talk about what the breastplate might be. We've spoken in the past about how when Paul's envisioning this, he's envisioning what the Romans wore. And I'm sure we've all seen plenty of movies where, where the Romans wore these gleaming silver breastplates. You know, it maybe had muscles carved into them and stuff like that. But, you know, while things like that did exist, chances are those kind of fancy plate metal ones were really just for officers or people who had a bit of money. Most of your, your general soldiers, their breastplate would be made of chain mail or some form of scale mail. And it would really just be like a, a male jacket that would come over the shoulders and hang down, maybe just beyond the waist, just covering them. And you know, there would have been some Roman soldiers who all they really had was padded fabric. So, so, so in a sense, we don't really know what Paul's envisioning, what rank he's envisioning when he talks about this. But in another sense, it doesn't really matter. Because all of these things done the exact same thing. They offered protection for the soldier from the neck down to the waist. They, they covered the heart and they covered all the kind of major organs. And that's the purpose of it. And Paul is saying to us that as Christian soldiers, we are to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is what covers the Christian's heart. Righteousness is what encases and protects the soldier of God. So what is this righteousness that he's talking about? Whose righteousness is it he's talking about? Well, like we found with the belt of truth in the other message, that there are there are two ways that we could probably interpret this. One of the ways that we could read into this is that it is our righteousness. That the righteousness being described here that protects us is our is our own, that it's righteous, it's our righteous living, that it's our our drive and desire to live lives of, of integrity and uprightness before God. And, and that, this kind of makes a lot of sense because, as you probably know, one of the main ways that the devil attacks us and tries to, to bench us is, is by tempting us he tempts us away from the works of God he tempts us away from closeness to God and one of the best defenses against temptation is to have that desire and to have that drive to be living right to be living pure to to be serving God in holiness and in righteousness when you have already made that decision to live righteously and you you are you're doing it and you're working hard at it temptation doesn't find it so easy to get into your life. You know, Paul's describing this, and there's a bit of an echo here of Isaiah 59, 17, where he's describing this heavenly warrior, a God's warrior, and, and he describes him as, Isaiah says this as, as putting on righteousness as a breastplate. Putting on righteousness. This, this figure Isaiah's talking about is righteous. He has a righteousness. He lives righteously and he puts it on like a breastplate. It protects him like a breastplate. Being righteous, living a certain way, it shields him from the attacks of the enemy, from the temptations of the devil. The other way we can look at this is that the righteousness Paul is talking about is the righteousness of Christ. When you accepted Jesus Christ in faith, when you accepted his salvation, Jesus didn't just remove 
your guilt. He also gave you righteousness. We often say, oh, well, Jesus died for me. Jesus took my sin away. Jesus took my guilt away. But we, but we often forget that in the same moment, he gave us righteousness. It's as if, as if God has a book, a record book, with all this stuff in it, everybody's life in it. And if you were to open it up at the page of your life, at one point, your name would have been there. And next to it, it might have said something like, sinner. It might have had a list of all the things you have ever done wrong. It might have even said that the debt, that the punishment for all this stuff is death. Spiritual death, eternal death, separation from God. When you accepted the salvation of Jesus Christ that he won for you at the cross, Jesus rubbed all of that stuff out. He erased that from the book, giving you a clean slate. But he didn't stop there. He also wrote in its place the righteousness of Christ. Jesus didn't just give you a clean slate. He started writing a new chapter. He didn't just wipe away your debt. He accredited something to your account. He accredited you with righteousness, with his own righteousness. And it's as if Paul is saying here that it is the righteousness of Christ that righteousness that has been imputed to us, imparted to us, given to us, that acts as this breastplate. And this, this is really important to understand because, because again, another one of the ways that, that the enemy often attacks us is to accuse us. The, the word devil, the, the very word that we call him, the devil, comes from the word that means slanderer. And you don't need to be a follower of Jesus very long to know that the devil slanders you. He, he tells you that you're not good enough. He tells you that you're not worthy. He reminds you of all the ways that you've failed in the past, all the sins that you've enjoyed. He, he, he tries to convince you that you are not the person God thinks you are. The devil will try to get you to, he tries to beat you in the fight by getting you to back out of the fight. He tries to beat you in the fight by making you feel as though you are not worthy to be fighting alongside God, to be fighting against him. This is one of his main tactics against us. He slanders us. So how marvellous is it then that we can, we can realise that there is a righteousness that is not our own. The righteousness of Christ that has been imputed to us, that has been given to us, credited to our account, that, that stands between us and the slanderer, is the righteousness of Jesus Christ that encases us, that shields us, that guards our heart like a breastplate. It's marvellous, isn't it? So which one is it? What's the best way to read this? Which way sounds best? Is the breastplate of righteousness, is it our own personal righteousness? Or is it the righteousness of Christ that's been given to us? Well, could I perhaps suggest to you today, can't it be both? You see, our own righteousness, as good as it may be, is never going to be good enough. Isaiah says that our own righteousness is like filthy rags in comparison. It's not good enough and it's never going to stand up on its own. We need the righteousness of Christ that has been given to us. Yet even though we are given the righteousness of Christ, that doesn't mean that we can just decide to live how we want. We are given the righteousness of Christ, therefore we must strive to live righteously. So I would suggest to you this morning that the best protection comes from both. It comes from being someone who can say, I have been forgiven, I have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ and because I have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ, I am going to do everything I can to live righteously for Christ. So let me just ask you today, have you been wearing your breastplate? Have you perhaps been leaving gaps in your armour? 
because you've been doing things that you know aren't right? Have you perhaps been suffering under the insults and the slander and the accusations of your enemy, the devil, because you're failing to stand behind the righteousness of Christ, because you're failing to understand the status that you now have in him? If so, do as Paul the Apostle instructs, do as scripture instructs and put on the breastplate of righteousness so that you can make your stand against the evil one. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for this great work you've done in our lives. We thank you that you have given us the righteousness of Christ. He won that, he earned that, he didn't just wipe our debt clean, but he put something into our bank account, God, his very own righteousness, God. And Lord, now that we are made righteous, help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to live righteously for your glory. Amen. Amen, church. God bless. Be safe. Take care.